Welcome to the Yarn and You Girl podcast. I'm Janine, also known as Yarn and You Girl. And this is my channel where I talk about everything that I'm doing crafting wise. It's mostly about knitting. Sometimes I throw some crochet in there or cross stitch or sewing or whatever, but it's mostly knitting. So I hope that that's why you're here. I hope that you're having a great day. It is March 27th and we are well into our isolation period here in Washington State as I'm sure a lot of the rest of the community out there um, is as well so last time I spoke with you guys was maybe a month a month and a half ago and I was gearing up for a couple different shows well I had one of the shows up in Puyallup it was the Sew Expo, and that was kind of right at the beginning of this uh, coronavirus scare. And the show went on like normal. I felt like attendance was great. And then two weeks later, I was supposed to go to Vogue Knitting Live Seattle. And that was about a week after or a week before they canceled the show. I did just get some information that they are rescheduling it, but not until April of 2021. So at first we kind of thought this might blow over a little quicker than it is, but it seems to be uh, kind of slowing down or the process of getting through it seems to be slower than we expected. So, which is good because that means we're flattening the curve or, you know, whatever they're calling it these days. We're keeping our social distance and hopefully we're getting fewer and fewer cases but um, by doing that but I thought you know it was only going to be a couple weeks and things would be you know over and done with but it's more like months now maybe we don't really know nobody knows really what's going on I do know that my Vogue got canceled and then my son and I were supposed to go to Washington DC for his eighth grade DC trip in April, um, sort of middle end of April. And that also has been canceled, which makes me even more sad than Vogue being canceled. Partly because when I was in eighth grade, I didn't get to go on my Washington DC trip because my parents couldn't afford to send us. I went, you know, I have a twin and I went to a public school. And so it wasn't a mandatory or required thing or, you know, let's everybody go. It was more of a privilege. If you could go, you should go. Um, but there was no way my parents could send two of us. So neither of us got to go. I, it, I always had wanted to go. I felt like it was such a milestone, kind of like outdoor school for, you know, fifth grade. You just, it was something that you should experience as a student. Um, a lot of times people will go on vacation and especially to DC and they will go do the museums and, and the mall and everything like that. But if I was just going on my own, I don't know if I would hit all these important areas or if I'd be able to hit all these important areas. Um, going as a chaperone, I knew it was going to be a boom, boom, boom kind of trip where you just hit the ground and you're running and you're seeing everything. But I also was very excited for that because I was excited to see all these new experiences I've never been. I was excited for my son to have that experience. And now it's also been canceled. It may be being postponed. We are trying. Um, so the teacher who is organizing it is trying to work with the travel company to do maybe something in the summer, which I'd be okay with. I, you know, I'd be happy right now. Uh, it sounds like the travel company may not be willing to reimburse parents. Um, unless you bought the protection plan, which I bought the protection plan for myself, which normally I never do. Uh, normally I am like, eh, I'm going to go. Like no matter what, I'm going to go. But I bought the protection plan for myself that because work has been a little, uh, I don't know how to, how to say it. It's just been a little iffy with whether or not you can get your time off that you're requesting. And I did not want that to come be a factor so for my own ticket and um stay and all that stuff 
I bought the protection plan. I did not buy the protection plan for my son because I figured no matter what, he was going to go. And now, you know, they're talking about maybe not reimbursing, which would be really awful considering it's not like we did anything. It's not like we got sick and canceled our trip. It's the whole world shut down and canceled our trip. So, like I said, the teacher is working with the tour company and trying to get things all organized and ready to go. But that's sort of what's been happening in my realm. Everything I was looking forward to has been canceled. <laughs> I'm supposed to go to Vegas in May. I don't know if that will happen either. My brother's 40th birthday is this year, and so we were all going to go to Vegas for the weekend. That may not happen now. I've still got my room, but I haven't made a, I didn't buy any tickets for plane or anything like that. Uh, and I'm kind of waiting to sort of see what happens with in the next month, because it's in the middle of May that we're going. And then my brother's supposed to get married this summer, June 20th, and we don't even know now if that's going to happen with everything that's going on. And he's a little stressed out and his fiance is a little stressed out about that, which is totally understandable. Um, but I'm sure you all have some kind of coronavirus uh, experience that is something that got canceled, something that you are looking forward to that you're no longer able to do. Uh, if you want to share them with me, that'd be great. I would love to hear what's been going on. I know with this enforced isolation or stay at home type thing we're having a we have to reach out and connect with our community and be sure that people know that they're still important so you guys are all important to me I am so happy that I can still be here and um, I can run my business my yarn business out of my home I am a pharmacist so I'm still working um, considered essential community support so I am still working a little bit which is a little scary for me partly because I don't want to be a frontline person <laughs> I'd prefer to just be at home and a hold up and but I know it's important that people get medication and I'm grateful you know that the grocery stores are still open and the you can still get food delivered and things like that so I am grateful that I had there are those people I I know people are grateful that I am still coming to work we are actually seeing quite a few yeah there are some people who are losing their patience with our because we're flooded with work right now it's crazy everybody um, within this first la these last couple weeks everybody's kind of panicked and um, we've seen it on the news you know buying up all the grocery store items and things like that um, the same is sort of happening in the pharmacy where people are sort of stressing out about getting their medications on time and um, also getting their medication. They're, so they're ordering prescriptions and things that they haven't used in a really long time. And so we're really being flooded with a lot of work right now. And we're behind. We've been behind as it is because our hours have been cut before. And so we're even further behind. People, for the most part, are very understanding and very grateful that we're here and we're, we're helping. There are a couple people that are starting to, you can tell that the stress of the isolation is starting to get to them. They've waited long enough. They really don't want to be out there, you know. But we may have hit like a turning point. I guess today my husband, was he's called in to work because one of the pharmacists was coughing and she needed to go home or needed to, you know, not come in today. So he got called in to cover the shift. And the pharmacist who was working this morning called him and was like, it's completely dead. I'm all caught up. You know, you don't have to come in until later if you don't want to. And so maybe we've hit this. Um, the panic has sort of died down. And now people, you know, they've got what they need and they're okay at least for another month, you know, or whatever. So we'll start to see, you know, what's happening here in the next couple of weeks, uh, how that's going to play out at the store and what they're going to do if, you know, one of us gets sick and things like that. So I don't know. We'll, we'll just have to see. Anyway, I've rambled on now for 10 minutes at least about coronavirus. 
<laughs> that's not what you guys are here to here to listen to, but um, it is a hot topic right now. It is what everybody is thinking about and talking about, and I'm stressing about it. So it's nice that I can vent a little bit to you guys too. Anyway, so a couple things, couple business, sort of like you know, housekeeping stuff. Uh, I am helping to promote and participating in a craft along with Anders Mill Knits uh, YouTube podcast. Um, and she also does the Little Cabin Knits. I think it's an audio podcast. Now, I have not listened to her audio podcast. I actually was looking for it today and couldn't find it. So maybe if um, you're watching, you can put a little, if you know where to find her audio podcast but it's called the little cabin knits and she used to live here in the area and we um got together a couple times and she ended up moving home to alaska so she's up in alaska now and she's uh, podcasting from her home up there and she decided we are doing since we're in this enforced isolation that we really need to kind of support our community and support each other and so we're doing kind of a very loose uh, craft along so it's pretty much anything crafting cross stitching sewing you know making project bags knitting crocheting whatever it starts April 1st and it goes through June June 20 I don't know all of June maybe I'm gonna look right now because I can't remember um, let's see she wrote it all in her little thing here so let's see July, no, sorry, April 1st through July 31st. And it is basically, so you'll go, I'll put a link in the bottom in the show notes here that show where to go to participate. And you can get points. You basically during that whole time you knit or craft or do all these things and you just record it, record what you did, how much yardage you used, um, what pattern, whether you purchased the pattern new or whether it was one from your library, how many hours you've worked on the project, that kind of thing. Um, and then at the end of July 31st, we'll tally up all the points and then the winner will get prizes. So it sounds like um, the first prize winner will is a sweater's quantity worth of yarn. That's pretty awesome. Uh, second prize is a skein and a project bag. And then a third prize is a skein of yarn. Third runner up. Stash, uh, three runner up stashers, it looks like, will get a pattern of their choice from Ravelry up to $7. And then also three participants will get a pattern of your choice from the Crazy Sock Lady Ravelry store. So um, you'll do, so you'll go to her. Ravelry group and basically you're just going to have one log under the finished object or the tally uh, tab that she starts and you're going to have one entry and you'll go in and edit that particular entry for your points as you go. You only want to have one entry though because we're not going to be going through the feed and adding people's stuff up. We want you to be just in one section so that we can look at your points uh, just in one place and we don't have to work that hard because we don't want to work that hard uh, but very very exciting I am excited because it's just very loose knit along I'm not very good at structured knit alongs or craft alongs I like the idea of participating in them but I'm never good at finishing so that's something that'll keep me kind of interested because I'm gonna be crafting anyway so I can participate in there and show you what's going on and she just wanted to make sure that more people were aware of the um, event that's happening and then I think she's also doing some kind of mini swap as well and I'll post a link to that also I'm not really sure what the deal is with that I don't know if she's running that or if she's just participating in it and wants to uh, have other people involved. So I'll post both the links, one for the um, craft along and one for the mini swap in the bottom um, down bar here with the show notes. So, and you should check out her podcast. She's a really sweet lady. 
and um, I kind of wish you lived around here because it'd be nice to have a close a close knitting friend to get another close knitting friend. So anyway, that's housekeeping stuff. I What have I been working on? What have I been doing? What have you all been doing in your isolation? Have you been crafting like crazy? Because I feel like I've done a lot but haven't really finished a lot or have a lot to show you guys. Um, it's which is weird because it's been a month and a half or so since I've actually gotten on here and chatted. Um, I have one finished object. Well, now I'm gonna I have two finished objects actually. One of them is drying upstairs, so you will not see it today. You will have to wait and see it next time. Um, and then I have a sock, like a half object, and then a bunch of whips because all I want to do right now is cast on new projects and it's yeah I just I just have the bug I just want to start things but I don't really care about finishing them right now so I made myself actually finish the sweater upstairs I made myself finish that before I cast on something else which I finished it this morning and I cast on something else right now like oh you know today so let me um, show you what I've got for finished objects this is uh, the Party Top by Abby E. Knits. And it is a pay for like cropped sweater. Now I modified the neckline. Her neckline is a lot more up here and straight across. I modify the neckline to be more of a scoop E. It looks more like a square, but it's a scoop. The um, arms are just this eyelet pattern. So it's just a really cute, I worn it a couple times and not a huge crop top person, but I wore this over like a long white button up. I've got the yawns today. Sorry guys. Whew. It's probably because it's in the afternoon and in the afternoon I get what I call the doldrums and I'm just kind of like, ugh in the afternoon. So this is actually good practice for me because I um, need to be cheerful and not so tired. And plus it's giving me something to do for this like dull part of my day. I'm definitely not an afternoon person. I'm a morning person and the afternoons just kind of like, bleh. I feel like it just, bleh. yeah, I need lots of energy stimulant in the afternoon to stay awake. But anyway, Party Top by Abby E. Knits. And the yarn I used is my um, Yarn and You Pop DK. The colorway is Mother May I. It's a light, like, pink, purple, gray combo. Slightly speckled. It's really pretty. I did this, like I said, I'm not a normal crop top person, but I did this top particularly because I had three skeins of this that I'd purchased for something else and I ripped that project out and the top used exactly three skeins and for me for my size so and it was fast and I wanted something fast to knit up before my sew expo so I could have another sample of my yarn uh, knit up now I used the helical knitting method which I've never done before on a sweater um, and it's the method where you're alternating skeins but you don't have that uh, stop and start at the same point every time you alternate uh, so you're all you're rotating your round every, like three stitches ahead each time and that worked amazingly well there's lots of cool YouTube tutorials on the helical knitting and uh, I really really thought it was great now next time I do it I tried to do it into the ribbing here and next time I will not do that because I feel like part of my rib looked a little shorter than the other because of where it stopped and started but nobody's gonna notice that and honestly I don't even know really where it is anymore Sorry, yawns again. So, the nice thing about being at home and podcasting to you guys is that if I blow my nose or breathe all over you, 
I'm not going to be giving you anything <laughs> or yawn all over you. So that is my one finished object that you're going to see today. The second thing I have that is my half object is a pair, uh, a sock basically. So this is just a uh, three by one ribbed sock. I just kind of worked on this at the Sew Expo. So originally I had started doing like a pattern in the three by one rib and I didn't like, I wasn't really keen on it. I didn't think it looked that great and you were kind of losing the pattern. So in the variegation of this yarn, this is O Loops uh, Bellini Breeze in her fashion knot. I do carry a uh, fashion knot in the, in the shop. And I tried, um, I had done a flegal heel on a toe up sock a while back and I really liked it. Um, and I had made this one cuff down. I had started the cuffs. So I didn't want to rip. I just ripped back the pattern like just to the two by two cuff. And then I just restarted the three by one rib without the pattern. And I didn't want to, you know, take the whole thing out and start over from scratch, but I still wanted to try the, the flegal heel. Now, when you do the flegal heel from the cuff down, it usually looks different than the flegal heel from the, uh, the toe up. And I was reading a tutorial on how to alter it so it had the same look as the flegal heel from the toe up. So I did, I found this little like blog that gave you directions on how to do the flegal heel from the cuff down and get the same kind of look and I followed that and I think it'll be okay. I'm not sure how well it will fit. Uh, we'll see. I do like the flegal heel a lot because it sort of gives you a gusset shape um, or a gusset fit without the flap and gusset and without having to pick up stitches and you don't end up with holes in the side. Now, when I do my heel flap and gusset, I typically don't end up with holes in the side, but um, sometimes if you're a newer knitter or you're not very careful about where you pick up your stitches, you can get that little hole there. It can be pretty hard um, for some people. And I just feel like this is a really good alternative for that. So if for sure, if I was doing toe up, I, I like this this heel a lot. Now the cuff down version was a little finicky, but only because I had to sort of wrap my brain around doing it in the opposite direction. But yeah, I liked it a lot. We'll see how it fits. I don't think it would be good for a contrasting color because you're basically, I don't know, you'd have this little teeny wedge of contrasting color or you know you'd have this yeah you'd just be this weird little wedge of contrasting color and I don't know if I'd like that a lot so I'd probably stick with the heel flap and gusset or the fish lips kiss if I was doing um alternate you know a, a contrasting color heel that's the word I'm going for so there's that and I've gotten the second one started. It's not very far. It's just, you know, here. I need to go maybe another inch of ribbing before I start my heel. Um, I'm hopeful. <laughs> no, I didn't make very good notes because I don't. I just knit and I, I don't have the time remember what I do so we'll see if I may if I can find the tutorial that I used that was the written version of the flegal heel from the cuff down so that I can have the exact same on the bottom I haven't worked on these because I don't want to get to the heel and then not know what to do so when I'm ready to wrap my head around that again, I will start, you know, and work on this inch and then I'll find the, you know, just work on that flegal heel again. But anyway, that's that. That is uh, just a three by one 
no pattern, just cast on 64 stitches. I did a two by two cuff for about an inch and a half, and then I switched to three by one rib. Um, lots of people I know love the three by one rib socks. They say they fit really well. I'm not sure I like the way that they look necessarily when it gets all stretched out, but um, it does fit pretty well. It does have that kind of sucks in a little bit with the ribbing. So that is all I have for finished objects and half objects. The rest of the stuff here is a bunch of whips. And the first one, what should I show you guys first? I'll show you this one. This one's really fun which this is called tray fun and let me see if i can pull up the pattern here because i don't print my patterns typically so stuff doesn't always i don't always have something to show you guys but i do want to show you the pattern here so this is a triangle shawl like cowl shawl cowl you know so a cowl but it has a triangle handkerchief style in the front. And that is blowing out real bad. So that is tray fun. It is got some tassels, some brioche, a little bit of lay, like fun detailed stuff, some popcorn stitches, baubles, that kind of thing. And the gal who, um, is the author is Justina Justina Lorkowska Lorkowska um, she's also Let's Knit uh, and I follow her on Instagram and I think at the beginning of the February she was doing like um, offering a pattern a day for I don't know discount for love or something like that you know because that's a February is all about love and there are a couple of her patterns that I really like. So I bought this one, and I think I bought Cozumel is the other one, and it's another cowl that uses DK and um, is like a color, like a little bit of a color work where you're kind of using up scraps and stuff. Now, this is done in bulky yarn. Yeah, or sorry, excuse me, Erin Wait, which... It's, you don't really um, have a lot of, there's not a really a lot of air and weight stuff around, but I found some, first of all, so Sweet Georgia worsted is definitely bigger than traditional worsted. So I am using Sweet Georgia worsted for my contrast color. This one is mint julep. And instead of doing like hers, her base was like a gray and she had like the fun color as the contrasting tassels and, and accents throughout. I'm doing my base as this wild and crazy color, and then this is my contrasting color. So um, my wild and crazy color is actually Ching Fiber, or yeah, Ching Fiber, and this is um, Cha Cha color, and it's this green and white and with bits of pink and orange and that blue and it's just like I don't know I love it it's crazy cool it's so wild and so far this is my cowl so it's like I said it's a triangle it's got like this row will have the tassels attached to it I've done the popcorn and then this next section is like these little welts and I'm kind of stuck here. It's not because I'm not stuck because I don't know how to do it. I'm more stuck because it takes forever to do the welt row. And so I got through one and I was like, I have to do two more of those. Oh my gosh. So anyway, I will get it done, but I got sidetracked and wanted to do something else. But it's a really super fun cowl and I could finish this like no problem like super fast probably oh my gosh I'm gonna sneeze oh sorry guys <laughs> again that's why we're doing this through the internet so I don't sneeze on you I don't think my sneezes are illness sneezes but 
We don't really know these days. Could be anything. Could be coronavirus. Who knows? So, anyway. So that's this one. It is tray fun. And it is really fun. It changes a lot. There is a lot of this garter. And it's such a wild color combination. Um, hopefully, it won't be so wild that I won't want to wear it. <laughs> but I loved, I loved this crazy variegated guy right here. I just thought that was so awesome. So anyway, I'm working on that. Again, with Ching Fiber in the cha-cha color and then Mint Julep, Sweet Georgia Worsted. And those are both an Aaron weight. Sweet Georgia Worsted calls it worsted, but again, I think it's heavier than a worsted. So, And it works actually quite well with the um, Ching. And I never worked with Ching fiber before. I see it on Instagram all the time, um, and her colors are beautiful, but I'd never worked with it before. And it is, it's lovely, lovely yarn and lovely coloring. Lovely coloring. So, one of the other things I started is uh, Once and Floral um, by Max. What's his name? Maxim Sear, Max the Knitter on Instagram. And it is this Colorwork sweater. Okay, that's blown out really bad. Sorry, I don't have it printed, but there's all these roses on the yoke. And um, it's just lovely color work. Now, my color work sucks a bit. Um, I'm trying really hard to make it work, but it, I most of the time it ends up being too, too tight. You know what I mean? And so we'll see. I just got this started. I had a bunch of Brooklyn Tweed Loft in this is like owl color, just like a taupey brown. And then I had have some Tuku fingering and in these two colors, this like hot pinky fuchsia and then this like chartreuse yellow color, yellow green. It's hard, hard to explain. But um, so I'm halfway through the color work. I have not worked on this in a while either. And it just looks like a mess right now. So... I don't know how much inspiration this is going to give you guys because it's just a tangle. And all my floats are super loose. I'm trying to make sure that my color work isn't too tight. So my floats are kind of loose. But, and this is the, the neckline seems awfully, this is the neck. And I don't know if when you put it on, if you create like a, You'll pick up stitches and then like do the neckline and it'll cinch it up maybe a little bit, but I haven't got that far, but my color works just a little, I don't know. It's just a little crazy, but it doesn't look too bad. It just doesn't look as neat as other people's color work. I see all these people, <laughs> this is so frustrating to me. I see all these people post their like beautiful circular yoke photos. And I'm like, how, how, how does that happen? Mine never looks that beautiful. I tried to lay this down in a circle and it just looks like a mess. So anyway, I don't know. But I started this and I really love this sweater. So I'm trying, I just need to get through the yoke. If I can get through the yoke, I'm just gonna, it's gonna be smooth sailing from then on out. And I'm hopeful that it will look pretty. So we shall see, and may, obviously blocking will make a huge difference. I just need to um, pick this back up again. I stopped uh, right, so again, this I started right before um, the Sew Expo in February, and I didn't want to be working on it while I was there because it's color work and you can't work on it. So I picked up my that sock I was doing, and that was just like mindless and easy to do at the Sew Expo. This clearly is not mindless, so I didn't want to 
get too wrapped up in it, but I'm maybe halfway through the color chart of the yoke. So that is Once in Floral by Maxim Sear. I think Cy Sear. I don't know. I'm not sure. It's C-Y-R. Anyway, he's cool. He um, does some really cool color work, fun sweater stuff. So you should check him out on Instagram. He's Max the Knitter. So that's that one. And I love this two, I love the Tuku fingering. Um, I should have plenty of these left over. I will probably make some socks. They're only 50 gram skeins, but I did a really long pair of socks in 250 gram with two. And so I could do like shorties with these and they would be some great socks. I will definitely have enough of the pink. I may not have enough of the chartreuse, but I could do some cuffs, you know, and heels and stuff. But I really like my green. Uh, they were the, my copycat, Andrea Mowry. I can't remember the name of the sock right now, but it had like a garter ridge in the middle and some cables on the side. I can't remember the name of the sock. Anyway. These would make some nice socks for leftovers, and I should have plenty of leftovers, at least of the pink. Maybe, maybe not of the yellow, but we'll see. So that's that. That's uh, Once in Floral. And then um, the next thing I've been very excited about is a crochet project that when I was at Knitting as uh, the Sew Expo, Rebecca and Stephanie from the Mean Girls uh, came by and said hi, and Rebecca was talking about this crochet shawl. Well, it's like a scarf that she really wanted to do. I think she said maybe Christy Glass had done it and showed it or something, and she fell in love with it. And when I saw it, I fell in love with it too. So I spent the whole weekend at the Sew Expo just putting color combinations together. Let me see if I can find, um, again, a photo for you guys. It may not be the greatest, but it'll be something. So it's called Ziggy Interrupted. It's by Sandra Paul. It is crochet. So if you know how to crochet and you're always talking about how all of us knitters, you know, don't have, there's not enough patterns for crochet, this one is a beautiful one. Uh, it is kind of a combination of granny squares and a ripple blanket. And oh my, you're never, nope, that's not going to work. It's just a big white blob. Maybe. Oh, oh, there we go. There we go. So it's lovely. It has these granny squares, tassels. That's a horrible photo of it. But it, Ziggy Interrupted by Sandra Paul, and I have got quite a bit done. It is, so you put together these granny square panels, and then you attach yarn. So the first granny square panel of mine is here, and then you start doing the ripple stitch for a bunch of sections, and then you add another granny stitch, granny square panel here. And so I am almost done. I have to add the last color for this next section of ripple. It's the very last color here. And then I will start doing another section of grannies. And then I will do, let's see another stripey section and then another set of grannies I think I can't remember it's like um I feel like at once I get these grannies done I will be halfway through I think that's where I am so I'm almost at the halfway point once this yeah so once I get that next granny square section done I will just have two more stripey um, panels and two more granny square panels so but the nicest thing about this is that I don't have to think about what colors go where. Like she has it all mapped out even for your little granny squares. So you just designate what's your A, B, C, D, and E colorway. 
And then you just follow her little schematic and you don't have to think about what should I put here and does it look too uniform? I don't want all, you know, pink in one section. She's got it all where it's like just enough mix and match that um, it doesn't look like you tried too hard and it looks really great. So, so much fun. I am loving this. So the colors, the yarn that I use is all yarn. Um, most of it is all my own hand dyed yarn, except for one skein. I used one skein of O Loops Fashion Knot in the Cahoots colorway, and that's this one, or this guy right here. But the rest of it is in yarn that I have dyed, and like I sp said, I spent the whole of that weekend after Rebecca was showing me it, trying to put together color combinations for this shawl. So I, it's all sparkle yarn. So the Fashion Knot is a gold Stellina, and mine are all a silver Stellina, but it doesn't matter. Um, I have this pink. This is called uh, My Bleeding Heart. And then I have this yellow which is called Wildflower. It's got those little bits of pink and purple in there. And then I have this dark green, which is deep in the woods. And then the last one of mine, this is Hot Toddy. And it's like a creamy with browns and greens sort of popping through. So if you want to see them on the panel here, Hot Toddy, Wildflower, Deep in the Woods, My Bleeding Heart, Cahoots, then you have Hot Toddy again, and Wildflower. So that's the one panel. But I just love, love, love the way this is turning out. This is super fun. It's a scarf, which I don't normally make scarves these days, uh, but I think I will totally wear this. I am digging on the fact that it will have tassels at the end, which will be so cool. And it's a nice change of pace for me. The crochet uh, stripey section's very easy. Um, it's nice and rhythmic. The, oh, the little granny squares aren't hard to make. They're literally like two rounds. Uh, the biggest issue is putting them together. Uh, that isn't hard either, but it is definitely time consuming, you know? So there's that, but I'm not, I'm enjoying it a lot. And I just do like the beginning of the pattern, she says, make so many granny squares. It's like 80 something granny squares. I didn't do it that way. I made enough for panel one, put panel one together, did the stripes. Then I made panel two. Now I'm doing the stripes. I haven't made any of the granny squares for panel three yet. Um, as soon as the stripes are done, then I'll start working on the granny squares. And they're nice. They're not um, something that I can do while I'm sitting and chatting with someone, but when I go on my break at lunch, I can sit in my car and I can whip out, you know, three or four little squares, maybe more, depending on how much time it takes me to eat, you know, and then I'll do three or four and then I'll weave in the ends. That's kind of a pain, but you know, that's what you gotta do. So I'll do like three or four, weave in the ends, do three or four, weave in the ends. And then once I've got them all for that particular block, I will lay them out and crochet them together. So that's what I've done here for this so far. And then, you know, you just have to attach it to your stripe and move on. So I haven't, I blocked this end because these granny squares were the first ones that I done. They were a little tight and a little tighter than my ripple was coming out. So I actually soaked this particular end and laid it out. So this looks really nice now that it's been blocked. This one up here still looks a little warpy. You know, it's a little like puckery, but once that gets blocked as well, that will look great also. So very much looking forward to working on that. Um, I just finished a sweater, which I told you earlier is blocking upstairs. And so that is on my 
um, drying. Like, I have this mesh dry sweater, like, rack that you lay your sweater on and then air can kind of flow in and out. Um, so it's laying on that to dry. And then I told, I mean, I've got this other sweater that I started and that's going to be kind of like my mindless knitting because it's a very easy sweater. Once I get past this yoke part, I'll be able to do this easy sweater. So that will be what I'll be working on um, when I'm at home or doing, I've been doing, normally I meet with a bunch of ladies on Monday and we have knit group. Well, with this whole shut-in thing, we're not meeting on Mondays, obviously, uh, for in physical proximity but we are meeting in um, having a zoom meeting for knit night or knit day or whatever you want to call it so I signed up for zoom I can do online set up an online meeting and then we sit and we knit and we sit in our little you know areas our comfortable crafty areas and we all just chit chat through the computer and knit. it's not exactly the same obviously but it's great that we can still do it i'm glad we figured out a way to make it work because that's been a blessing to be able to still meet with my ladies um from my monday knit group so anyway the next um and last project that i am working on right now is it just started so i told myself i couldn't start another sweater until i finished the one I was working on upstairs, which is now finished and drying, all the ends are woven in, everything is great, it's just drying. Um, so I started the, this one I actually printed for you guys, but my, um, I think I'm running out of black ink because everything came out green. But it is Daylin Pullover by, I think it's Isabel Kramer and it's this sweater it's just the pullover the front is just re regular stockinette the back is a garter and the garter panel kind of comes sort of to the front here in this like v so your garter panel gets larger if you look at the schematic on the back here oh my god can you even see that it shows this line right here that's where your garter is coming forward and it has a little bit of like a drop hem on the back or a high low on the back so it is made out of she does did it in swan island yarn the pattern called for swan island all american collection um I am using Brooklyn Tweed Shelter because I'm addicted to Brooklyn Tweed right now. And I'm using the color Camper. Now this color I had, I have it in my Bright Note sweater. That's the sweater that I finished. The one design that I am kind of working on that sort of got put on hold a little bit. But it's, it's almost ready for official release. I do need to take some photos, which is why I, I can't wait till it's dry. But... I had one like color section done in this and I remember when I was working on that color section I was like just really enjoying this particular colorway uh, looking at it I felt like it got prettier and prettier the more I looked at it so I just ordered a bunch from Church Mouse yarn and tees they are on Bainbridge Island up in Seattle and I ordered because right as this coronavirus stuff was starting, Brooklyn Tweed um, put out notice that they were going to have, um, they have this thing called a part together right now, which is basically um, they were going to offer discounts on their yarn so that we can all still enjoy this community and knitting. And so they were offering support, um, discounted yarn to help kind of support our community um, they were discounting their yarn about 10%, and so all their suppliers were discounting it 10%. Um, so Church Mouse had it on sale for 10% off. So I was like, yeah, sure, I'll buy a sweaters quantity of that. And it was like a week before they put in the 
only the people, so they've shut down all the businesses here in Washington unless you are an essential service. And apparently they don't consider yarn stores an essential service. So I got my order in before their yarn store had to close down for the temporary future. And I ordered eight skeins or nine skeins, one, two, three, nine skeins of camper and I'm gonna make the Dalen pullover with it now the reason I could get started on this one kind of right away was because my gauge on a seven she she called for a seven in the pattern was exactly the same as hers it was a, a four and a half stitches per inch and I knew that because I had been working with Shelter uh, on my Bright Note sweater upstairs that's drying. So I knew what my gauge was. I didn't have to swatch or anything. And I had two different colors that I could choose from and I, uh, that I had two sweaters quantity of Shelter. I had this one that I just purchased and then I had some Pendleton, which is like a green, olive green with bright flecks of chartreuse green throughout it. But I wasn't feeling green. I was feeling pink, so I went with the pink. Um, I'm not sure, you know, it's not everybody's color for sure, but I just really like it a lot. So this is how much I have so far. It's not, not much at all. I literally just got done with the short row shaping for the cowl, or cowl, you know, for the yoke of the sweater. So I am working on the short row, or finish the short rows, and now I'm just working on the increases until I can split for the sleeves. And I'm thinking this is gonna go pretty fast because it's a worsted blade sweater and it should go pretty fast. I have some dream knitting that I want to do. But again, I'm trying not to cast on all the things because I really want to cast on all the things. But I did buy a pattern for my next dream knitting sweater. So the Dalen pullover, that's what I'm working on sweater-wise right now. I have bought yarn for the Sorel sweater. I know you guys have all seen this one on Instagram because it's been on there like crazy. I love this sweater so much. Um, let's see. I don't see. Can you? See? I don't know. Okay, there you go. So you can see it's got like braids almost coming down on the yoke, and then it's a reverse stockinette. And she does it in a fade in one of them, and then a solid in another. And you hold your yarn together with some mohair. So I had bought some of this. A loft lace weight uh, from Knit Picks. It's a mohair silk. I probably might need some more. There's only 260 yards in here, and I so I only bought three, but I'll probably need some more. But that's okay. I'm not too worried because it is a fade. If my mohair is if is not in the same from the same dye lot when I get the next one if I need more it should be no problem because the fade will hide that um, it's a 70% super kid kid mohair and a 28% silk and I got three skeins of the um, blush color so this light light pink and then I did a pre-order from barnyard knits for these 20 gram mini skein sets, which there are 10 20 gram minis. They are 92 yards a piece. So total of 920 yards. And I bought two of the same set. So I would definitely have enough. Um, and this is their uh, Vintage Roses mini collection. And it's this, these yellows and pinks and purples. And I thought it would be kind of cool to just fade like the yellows to the purples, the sweater come yellow to purple. So I got two so that I would have enough to make sure that 
Um, I had large enough, you know, enough for arms and things like that, and I could match the fade um, there. I may not use all of them. I may only need, I mean, I don't need 1,800 yards of fingering weight for this sweater. Um, so I might, like, pick two, because there's quite a few yellows. I might pick two of the yellows and then go from those. There's, like, four yellows, I think. So I might pick two and then blend into the pinks and the purples and stuff. And we'll see. I'm not sure, but I really am excited about it. It's just, um, you know, there's 75 merino, 25 nylon, sock weight yarn. And they're just lovely. These were pre-order. I'm not sure if she still has pre um, orders available for this, but um, I just thought that that would be really fun. And it's kind of an already put together fade, sort of. So, yeah, I got two of these. That's a lot of minis. I don't usually do a lot of stuff with minis, but I thought that would be a great sweater. So I'm really looking forward to trying to uh, get some stuff done and then uh, start that sweater. I don't want to start it yet. I want to at least finish something else before I start that. Maybe only one new cast on for each cast off. I'm not sure. Uh, but very exciting. So that's kind of what's been going on here. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope this forced isolation is not um, making you crazy. Um, you can totally reach out to me. I am not a therapist in any way, but I love uh, chatting with this community. If you need somebody to knit with, we can have a Zoom meeting. That'd be totally fun. Um, I'd be happy to do that and uh, chat with some of you guys if you need a little bit of your, if you're missing your knit group, if you're missing your yarn support, if you're missing your community, I'd be happy to help kind of facilitate a group kind of get together online if you guys want to do something like that. Anyway, check out the knit along information or the craft along information and I will see you guys next time. Hopefully it won't be so long and stay safe and healthy out there, okay? Thanks.